Survivors of these fallen heroes are entitled to a life insurance payment, and the government uses a private company to handle it. But what happened to the mother of 24-year-old Ryan Bauman of Great Mills, Maryland, could serve as a lesson to every military family. Ryan was a neat kid. He really wanted to join the Army after 9-11 because he saw that there were things that he could do. Sergeant Ryan Bauman was as proud of his mission as his mother is of him. A soldier with the 101st Airborne, he was stationed in eastern Afghanistan, protecting villagers from the Taliban and providing critical services like repairing pumps, supplying water. One of the things that he said was that if anything happens to me, just let the world know we're making a difference over here. But on August 1st, 2008, Ryan was riding in a Humvee when he spotted an IED. He saw the IED. He told his driver go left and that placed the IED directly under him. The 24-year-old soldier was killed instantly. The driver, gunner and medic with him all survived. So in some ways, Ryan really was a hero that day yes. and sacrificed his own life to save the other people who were with him. Yes. Does that sound like Ryan? Absolutely. Life without her son was hard to accept until a casualty assistance officer asked her to choose how she would like to receive his death benefits. I handed the paperwork back to the poor casualty assistance officer and said, I don't want it. And he was very patient and explained that it wasn't an option and that really I had to accept it and I had to decide what to do. She eventually filed, electing a lump sum of $400,000. But the check never came. Instead, she received a check book and a packet from Prudential saying the money had been placed in its alliance account where it was available immediately and would begin earning interest right away. You can use the drafts to access uh, any time you wish. Everything seemed fine until she tried using the checks. And I was told that the check could not be verified. When did you realize this was a, a different kind of checking account? Sad to say, it wasn't until the journalist contacted me. The journalist was David Evans, an award-winning senior writer with Bloomberg Markets magazine. The life insurance company is holding on to their money, and that bothers some people once they find out. Evans' six-month investigative report, appearing today in the magazine's September issue, reveals that Cindy Lohman's money was being held in Prudential's general corporate account, accruing interest, most of it, for the insurance giant. They're able to, to, to create quite a float for themselves and they're able to earn the difference between the small interest rate that they pay to the survivors and the larger rate that they're able to make by keeping this money in their corporate investment account. In fact, in 2008, when Cindy Lohman's statement said she was earning less than 1% interest on her Alliance account, regulatory filings show Prudential was earning almost 5% on its corporate account. They figured out a way to create these retained asset accounts. They figured out a way to hold on to that money and actually turn death into a profit center. Evans says the practice of pooling and profiting from death benefits is surprisingly common and extends well beyond the military. We were able to determine that there's $28 billion in a million accounts uh, at more than 120 insurance companies across the U.S. And while Prudential's packet boasts words like control and security in big, bold letters, you'd have to read the fine print to find out that Alliance accounts are not insured by the FDIC. They're increasing their profits on all of our children's death benefits. Um, it's sad. And doing it in a way that puts the money at risk. Chairman Fulmer and members of the committee. They may be turning profits, but at least one veteran's advocate says any insurance company doing this is morally bankrupt. This is wrong. This is outrageous that a large insurance company is taking advantage of families at the very time that the American public expects that they be provided everything that they need. Outrageous perhaps, but is it legal? It doesn't appear to be criminally unlawful, but it's likely to be civilly unlawful and raises some difficult regulatory boundary questions. 
In a statement to CBS News, Prudential said today, we fully disclosed the nature and terms of the account to account holders, including the interest credited to their account. We also make it clear to beneficiaries that they can withdraw some or all of the money immediately or at any time and without delay. The interest rate paid to account holders has been comparable to other on-demand accounts. The Department of Veterans Affairs told us it is deeply concerned and is conducting a full investigation of the life insurance companies and their procedures. Meanwhile, Cindy Lohman says she closed her Alliance account and is still waiting to receive the balance. Whenever the money comes, it will be little consolation for a family that has already paid the highest price. It's hard to lose him. There's not a day that goes by that you don't think about that loss. Also in its statement to us today, Prudential said, quote, while we have had years where we have made a profit, we have also had years when we had losses because we assumed the investment risk for the money in the Alliance account. Death of an American in uniform, no matter what the circumstances, is always a tragedy. Now the Department of Veterans Affairs and the state of New York are investigating whether life insurance companies are taking advantage of grieving families when they're most vulnerable. This is in response to a story we brought you last night based on a six-month investigation by Bloomberg Markets Magazine. It's being called the life insurance industry's dirty little secret. Revelations, the nation's second largest insurer, was profiting from the death benefits of fallen soldiers. Until today, I actually believed that the families of our fallen heroes got a check for the full amount of their benefit. So this came as news to me. It's sad. Survivors like Cindy Lohman, whose son Ryan was killed in Afghanistan, believed they would be getting checks too. Instead, they were told their death benefits were being placed in a secure, interest-bearing account. But the funds are actually held in the company's own general corporate account, allowing Prudential to earn the lion's share of the interest for itself. I was stunned to realize that, oh uh, yeah, I had been duped. In 2008, when Cindy Lohman's statement said she was earning less than 1% interest on her Alliance account, Public records show Prudential was earning almost 5% on its corporate account. When I read about it and saw how despicable it was, I, I frankly thought it was treasonous. Pennsylvania Congressman Patrick Murphy is an Iraq War veteran himself and says he's looking into possible legislation to permanently end the practice of so-called retained asset accounts. I'm not sure if it's criminal or not, but what I know is it's wrong and it should stop. And if they don't stop it themselves, we're going to stop it for them. But the practice extends well beyond the military. New York-based MetLife, the country's largest life insurer, is one of over 120 insurance firms holding some $28 billion in retained asset accounts. Today, New York State Attorney General Andrew Cuomo launched his own consumer fraud investigation, serving subpoenas to MetLife and seven more life insurance providers. I am so angry at the insurance companies that... Meanwhile, the writer of the Bloomberg Markets Magazine investigation said his inbox was flooded with emails today from policyholders saying they're reeling from a broken trust. They sound like they feel betrayed that they didn't have more information about how these policies worked and they had to learn about it from reading a magazine article. In a statement yesterday to CBS News, Prudential said, we fully disclosed the nature and terms of the account to account holders, including the interest credited to their account. And late today, Prudential told us it's in talks now with the Department of Veterans Affairs to address the concerns that have now been raised. Now, another story about the treatment of America's fallen heroes at perhaps the most hallowed burial grounds in the nation, Arlington National Cemetery, there's now evidence of a shocking number of mismarked graves. Today, we learned it wasn't just a few hundred. It could be more than 6,000. And as Chip Reed reports, the man once in charge of the cemetery was asked to explain himself before Congress. I accept full responsibility 
for all of my actions. John Metzler, who spent the past 19 years overseeing Arlington Cemetery, said the buck stops with him, but he blamed limited resources and said he only discovered the problem recently, infuriating Senator Claire McCaskill. And the notion that you would come in here and act like you didn't know about it until a month ago is offensive. You did know about it, and you did nothing. A report by McCaskill's subcommittee says Metzler knew about the problem five years ago. People who worked for you had had enough and they blew the whistle. So how could such bureaucratic bungling occur on such sacred ground? Anything done by hand for 140 plus years, there has to be some errors somewhere. Higginbotham and Metzler, who were both forced to retire last month, spent $8 million trying to computerize the records, an effort that ended in failure. This is not complicated. It's called keeping track of who you bury where. McCaskill calls this a case of heartbreaking incompetence, but the new team in charge here at Arlington says eventually all the discrepancies will be corrected. Katie. Chip Reed at Arlington National Cemetery tonight. Thank you, Chip.